Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a, another viewer request video for you where I'm going to go through how <clears throat> you can use Airflow to manage and trigger AWS Lambda functions uh, in kind of an advanced manner. So we're gonna use uh, some RDS databases. We're going to use a few different other S or AWS tools like S3 buckets. We're going to integrate things like parallelism, branching, all centered around hey, how can you prepare data for being either transformed via AWS Lambda functions or actually training machine learning models using AWS Lambda functions? Um, so you really get an idea of how you can use them in a more advanced manner. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. And so the first thing we're gonna do as we do in all of my videos around Airflow is go to desktop, view repos, and then in here, we'll just make directory advanced or lambda advanced cd into there, and then astro dev init, create our Airflow directory, and then open it up in our handy dandy VS Code environment. Where is the good old data guy repos? Wrong one, sorry, apologize. Window open. To mapping over the dead space here. So here we're going to go to the data guy, video repos, open just Lambda Advanced, and then we're ready to start building out our environment. <coughs> um, so here, first thing we're going to do is go to our requirements.txt file and bring in all the packages and requirements we'll need. Luckily, this time, there's not a lot of things to go through, really just the Amazon packages, because we're pretty much using everything in AWS today. Uh, requests for requesting data from an API so we can just get some dummy data to use with our Lambda functions, and then also Bluetooth 3 so we can interact with S3 buckets um, in kind of a Pythonic way. Then we'll go and create our Lambda DAG, so Lambda and stop pi, and then bring in all these requirements and packages in at the top of the DAG. So here we're going to bring in the DAG object. AWS Lambda invoke function operator, the local file system S3 operator, bring our file into S3. Python operator, branch Python operator, so we can bring in some you know, Python functions, obviously, but then also have a branching decision tree based on uh, the results of a Python operation. Also empty operator, so we can use dummy operators. Days ago utility for you know scheduling from one day ago. Task group for creating task groups. Uh, trigger rules, so we can use the more advanced trigger rules included within Airflow. <clears throat> and then also JSON and requests for handling uh, API uh, data. So for both making the responses and then handling the responses as well, uh, or making the requests, sorry. And then we're gonna add some default arguments here. So just retries, retry delay, time delta of minutes E5. Uh, and then what we'll go to next is just start actually building out our DAG. So, here, we'll create our DAG definition body here. Actually, not even gonna bother having retries, so let's just delete that. Start dead days ago. Um, and then what we'll do here is create our DAG definition body. So just kind of complex ETL, ML processing. Um, and so I, I made it as one because you can kind of split either if you, you know, wanting something else for ETL or a different flow, you can swap that part out. If you wanna swap out the ML piece and you don't need to do ML, then you can swap that piece out as well. Um, so just kind of want to make this as modular as possible. And then what we're going to do is extract first some data from an API. So create some Python functions, use those extract data from an API. So then our next step is just going to be creating our first DAG, our first task, sorry. Um, so here, just create a task, extract from API. Here we're just going to put whatever API you want to use, in this case, just using a public API for entries. I just like to use this for dummy data making the request to that URL, so obviously swap it out for whatever your request or URL is. Then returning that response, uh, having that data saved in or from JSON into a Python dictionary, so that using this .json method, or sorry, just actually saving it as JSON, and then saving it to the file path for the API data uh, one JSON, and then just kind of opening it, dump, opening a file path, dumping the JSON data into that file, and then returning that file path for downstream usage. Um, and then, Next, we and also let me just make sure I have the decorator. So I didn't actually add the task decorator here. So this will allow you to use task decorators. So get that <coughs> out of the way there. Um, so now down here, next, just going to create a second one, and actually, do, not, 
create a second one and instead um, use the uh, dot partial expansion method um, to make this happen in parallel. So let me just adjust that to make that work. So just a slight adjustment, and this is the fun part of doing these live. We have to adjust on the fly as we think the new things. Um, so here, make this parallel. So we're just gonna actually read in the URL file name um, and then create that dynamically. And this will allow us to, to uh, extend this for as many different um, instances of the extract task that you want by using the dot partial and expand method. Um, and so I'll show you a really dumb way to do it. Um, so what you'll do, and just like, so you can see what this looks like, partial, so expanding. Um, and then what you would really want to do is actually, so this is kind of a way to do it for just two, but what you really want to do is pass it an array of all the different URLs you have here. Um, and so what that would look like. So the way you'd really want to do this in practice is you would create a list of your API details. So here, something like this. Um, and then you can pass this into using the dot expand method. And then here, boom. Um, so a little easier and you know kind of more production ready setup there. So then we'll do is create a branching uh, task branch just to check if the data is actually over 100 uh, rows or not. So here, we're going to say open that data file path. When it's over 100 rows, start the transformation and you know start the Lambda function. But this is kind of implementing soft batching to make sure, hey, there has been a X amount of data has appeared before I actually want to rerun my model and retrain it on it, which is a common workflow. Um, because you don't want to typically um, train, you know, retrain a model just on one additional new page data because it's going to be very expensive and it's not going to yield you much additional results. So once the data has reached that kind of threshold of 100 entries, then we're going to aggregate the data, um, bring it all into one file, <coughs> and prepare it for actual injection into the model. Um, and then, and this is kind of function that can be called later, but uh, we'll actually be ready just to bring in all the different aggregated data files and then insert them into the model. Then we'll have a task branch function. And here, what's going to happen is this is just a branch logic function we're gonna use for checking the model accuracy and then also um, checking if it has performed to our uh, determined threshold. And let me actually bring in the real threshold uh, logic. So here's an example of some real logic you'd wanna have here. Obviously, this is going to be the, you know different for your particular model and it's just kind of simulation, but this is just basically simulating accuracy and making sure it hits that accuracy threshold. Um, and then if it meets or exceeds that threshold, either evaluate the model um, or notify a failure. And so I evaluate really just send the model evaluation data out um, into uh, a notification channel so we know. Then what we're gonna do is create, implement that branching task logic. So check that extract data task, make sure the length is of that uh, specified 100 rows. Um, then also, if it's not, skip the transformation and wait for the next run. Then we're going to create our parallel transformation task group. So here, we're going to be transforming these data. For, you know, but this is actually happening before that aggregation step. So this is where we're actually transforming data with our AWS Lambda functions um, in a task group. So here we're transforming the API data one and API data two um, via two different uh, AWS Lambda function operators. Now you could do a similar uh, functionality here using dot partial and dot expand. The reason I split it out here is because you might have just different kind of lambda functions you want to invoke. Um, and so I just thought it was worth showing you this way of doing it. Uh, but just know that you can still use that dot partial and dot expand. You would just have uh, basically everything, honestly, everything would be in dot expand. Uh, because all three of these values would change. Uh, but this payload is kind of hard to wrap in a dot expand. So I think personally it's easier to have in the kind of this task group definition, but that's my preference. Um, then, so this is going to actually be where we're calling those Lambda functions, evoking them, and then returning the data, or not returning the data, but just transforming our data um, in AWS Lambda. Then calling that within our aggregated file data task. So just creating our downstream linkage to aggregate file. So after that data is transformed, aggregating them both into that <clears throat> aggregator JSON file. And then next, using the local file system to S3 operator to actually load that aggregated data into our S3 bucket of choice. And then 
Next, we're going to use AWS Lambda again for hyperparameter tuning training. So here, we're going to create another training group um, here and in, now invoking uh, these different models on our aggregated data. So this is just two different sets of hyperparameters. So this is where you choose the two different sets of parameters you want to use, create them as you want, um, and then pass them along into the AWS Lambda function so it knows to use that set of parameters, transform, or use this data for its model training, and then output the result. So second use of AWS Lambda within this DAG. And then after that, all that is left to do is just check the model performance and then notify uh, failure or uh, invoke a function to notify failure. So here, we're gonna check the model performance, use the conditional branch, make sure it meets that performance threshold. And then after that, use the AWS Lambda function again to actually evaluate that model output. Um, so check the model output, make sure it meets that evaluation criteria. And then if it doesn't meet that performance threshold, then run a function that notifies failure being Lambda. Um, I was just trying to toss as much stuff in Lambda as possible because you know I want to show you all the different ways that you can pass and use different trigger rules alongside Airflow. This trigger rule all failed. Really used for Lambda functions, especially if it relies on multiple upstream uh, dependencies. So super like that. Um, and then vice versa, you can use just one success or one failed um, if you want to say, hey, you know, whatever data file has appeared, process that. And then the only thing left to do is just add all of our different uh, task relationships here. So just using bitmapping, um, because a lot of these just reference the previous task output to actually get the data. And then save that, save our requirements.txt file, and head over into the UI to check it out.